This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for waking up with us on this Saturday. I'm Galen Etlin. The time now is six o'clock and coming up here, Portland is on high alert this weekend after another deadly shooting. What city leaders are saying this morning. Plus, relief is on the way for people behind on their rent during the pandemic. What that means for both renters and landlords. But first, our Chris McGinnis joins us live at home with the forecast. Chris, we're coming off another amazing Friday. What's today going to look like? Well, if you liked uh, Friday, we might, could we top it? I think we might top it in terms of the temperature. It's going to get even a little warmer as we head into our weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And we were off uh, to a really nice start. Gail, and let's take you live to Timberline. This shot pointed south towards Mount Jefferson, and you can already see the glow of the sunrise on the east slopes of Mount Jefferson this morning. It is bright. It is sunny over the Cascades. It's cloudy right now along the Oregon coast. Satellite radar shows that, and in fact, our live picture from Cannon Beach will confirm there may be even a little patchy drizzle at the beach this morning here in the valley. We are clear and off and running. It's 49 right now in uh, at PDX. Big picture across the state, 48 Baker City, 43 in Bend, and the Oregon coast generally in the mid to upper 40s this morning. The plan for today... Uh, at the beach, the clouds will burn off. You'll see sunshine in the valley. There's nearly a cloud to speak of right now. So we've got wall-to-wall -wall sunshine today. By noon, we're up to about 70, maybe a degree or two warmer than that by, uh, for some of us. And I think we top out at about 83 today with full sunshine. The sunset tonight, Galen, 835. Wow, spectacular. Chris, thank you so much. We'll see you in a few minutes. Now we begin with impacts on your travel this weekend. If you take the max, here's something to watch out for. There's some big improvements to the blue line that are starting this weekend. Service will be interrupted from Northeast 7th to the Gateway Transit Center. Shuttle buses will run at all six stops in the work zone. If you ride the blue, red or green lines, be prepared to add at least 30 minutes to your daily commute through May 23rd. We do have some sad news to share this morning. A woman is now dead from a shooting in Northeast Portland. That shooting was Wednesday night by Northeast MLK Boulevard and Decom Street. Police say 25 year old Danae Williams has now died. Her family provided this picture here. A man who was also shot has critical injuries but is expected to survive. We have not heard anything about a suspect yet. Police do think, though, that there are witnesses who left the area before officers arrived, and they're hoping to speak with those people. Now, in response to Portland's recent gun violence, Mayor Ted Wheeler and the city council put out a statement last night. It said in part, quote, there are several vigils and funerals planned in Portland in the coming days, and these vigils are credible targets for further violence. This weekend, investigators with the Portland Police Bureau's Enhanced Community Safety Team are on duty and in uniform and working with partners at the FBI. Their high visibility presence in the community is intended to deter anyone considering committing criminal acts. Now, city leaders added they think groups and people from outside of Portland are involved and that shootings may be some poor, so, uh, may be some part of demonstrating loyalty. All right, well, everyone is talking about this big update in the pandemic with confusion around the CDC's new guidance on masks. Oregon businesses are now waiting to hear how to move forward. Fully vaccinated people do not need masks, while many wonder about those who can't get vaccinated yet, like younger kids. KGW's Mike Benner spoke with pediatrician and parents. With the sun shining bright Friday afternoon, kids and parents alike flocked to Westmoreland Park in southeast Portland. An easy decision for mom Hannah Grassi. With our kids, we try to stay outdoors. Um, we try to remain in open air places. Grassi's three kiddos are all under the age of five, meaning they're not vaccinated. Parks with the fresh air feel safe to Grassi. Restaurants and grocery stores, not so much. In fact, they feel even less safe since the CDC's announcement that vaccinated individuals can go maskless in most places. People could choose just to go maskless even though they're not vaccinated. So I guess we have a little bit more of a uh, just a hesitation that we want to pay attention to. You know, in, in uncontrolled environments like that. Dr. Corey Fish of Brave Care understands where Grassi is coming from. He encourages parents to put their young, unvaccinated kids in masks before heading into busy indoor public places. And the doctor says it might not be a bad idea for vaccinated parents to mask up too. A lot of parents are, might be in a position where they're going to have to continue to mask with their kids because it's like, what, you know, why do, why do my parents, you know, uh, why, why don't my parents have to wear a mask and why do I? And, you know, 
Uh, we all know what that's like, you know, working with the, the littler ones. Where little ones can ditch their face coverings, Dr. Fish says, is in a controlled environment. If there's a, a group of parents, um, you know, say four or five, six sets of parents, and they all have kids under 12, but all the parents are vaccinated, particularly outside where we know risk of COVID transmission is low, um, you know, I, I, to me, that's a that's an acceptable situation where you could let the kids run around, you know, without masks and play. Hey. Dr. Fish says it comes down to risk reduction versus risk elimination, at least until young kids are eligible for a vaccine something that's already on Hannah Grassi's radar. You know, of course, we'd want to make sure that there is enough evidence in, in trials before we proceeded, but definitely we, we would be very interested in that. In Portland, Mike Benner for KGW News. While the mask update from the CDC leaves local businesses scrambling, vaccine passports could be coming to Oregon. The governor's office says the state's county risk framework is still in place and requires masks inside all retail businesses along with social distancing. So despite what you may have heard from the governor this week, you cannot take your mask off inside a store or restaurant in Oregon, at least not yet. The public health agencies that tell businesses how to operate safely do not have their own recommendations yet about how businesses should handle this mask issue. On Friday, Oregon State epidemiologist Dr. Dean Seidlinger said the Oregon Health Authority may require businesses to check for proof of vaccination if they allow customers to drop their masks inside. We would anticipate that a, uh, uh, an establishment, a business will have to have a system in place um, for asking about vaccine status and verifying that. Right now, we would, I would anticipate that that would be seeing a card with the individual's name, um, the vaccines they've gotten and the date and where they've gotten them. That could be a picture of that vaccine card or record from their provider on their phone. Local health authorities say that if we don't go with vaccine passports, we may have to rely on an honor system where people who aren't vaccinated do wear masks. And the idea of such an honor system is raising some concerns, especially because the country is so divided over the mask issue. KGW's Maggie Vespa spoke with some researchers who have been studying the societal components of this pandemic. Anybody can say that they got vaccinated or that they didn't get vaccinated. The vaccinated are safe to remove their masks and cease social distancing in most cases, says the CDC. And with that new freedom come new fears. I think my biggest fear would just be like, other people not actually being vaccinated and like not wearing their masks. <laughs> Policies on masks and vaccines have been divisive throughout the pandemic. Portlanders say looking ahead, they're just being realistic. A lot of people don't believe in being vaccinated, so you're never going to know who's who. Meaning, at least in the short term, we'll have to rely on the honor system and at most ask people to prove they're vaccinated. If it comes to that, it could be one more burden placed on the shoulders of small businesses. A staff member came to me and said, there's somebody who's refusing to wear a mask. Rachel Clark owns the Goose Hollow Inn in Southwest Portland Thursday evening, hours after the CDC's announcement, two maskless men came into her restaurant demanding to be served. They told Clark, I needed to be better informed that the CDC and the law was now that they didn't need to wear masks. To be clear, that's not true. The CDC issues guidance, but states decide whether to make laws based on that guidance. Plus, each business has the right to set its own policy. Clark hopes people remember how hard this pandemic has been on small businesses. They were pretty aggressive and rude, and um, that hurt my feelings a lot. I think just generally people are tired, they're confused. Dr. Amy Huff at Oregon State University has been studying the societal components of this pandemic, including the flare ups. She believes over time people will become more comfortable with this new guidance, and she notes we trust each other taking risks every day. So every time we get in the car and we get on the road with other drivers, we're trusting that they're not impaired or distracted. The research shows that when people are overwhelmed and when people are confused, they revert back to behaviors that they know and that feel safe. So I think we will likely see, at least for the short term, people continuing to wear masks, even if they don't have to. Maggie Vespa reporting there. Meanwhile, Oregonians who have fallen behind on rent during the pandemic will have eight more months to pay it off. The State House passed Senate Bill 282 this week, designed to help renters. It's now headed to the governor's desk for a signature. Right now, the grace period to pay off COVID era back rent expires at the end of June. This bill gives tenants through February 2022 to pay it. 
It also bars landlords from using COVID era evictions to deny future rental applications. Erin Meehan there owes around $4,000 in back rent and says her landlord has been willing to work with her. She testified in support of the bill to help other tenants who are not as fortunate. If people are scared and they're struggling and they're, they don't, you know, they don't know what the next thing's going to be. They believe that they have help on the way, and I just want to make sure that that happens. Some property managers, though, have concerns over this bill, saying in some cases it just prolongs evictions for tenants who are not making any effort to pay off back rent. They feel the bill should have required tenants to pay a little of their back rent every month. Evictions for other reasons outside of the pandemic hardship would still stand. Now, through all of this, rent prices are still ticking back up. So coming up next, where one analyst predicts we'll see prices increase even more and where he thinks they'll start to level off.